Alright, Scarlet Witch vs Zatanna, here's your spoiler warning, 3, 2, 1... Woo! Zatanna 1! Let's go! <clears throat> Alright, but how was the episode? Let's talk about that. Biff has a video too, and I'll go check all that out. All I care about is the epic Miss Zatara dub. Okay, so, the episode. Let's start with Wanda's analysis. <laughs> right, so, yeah, Wanda's analysis isn't very interesting. I was pretty firmly underwhelmed. I didn't get to hear of anything particularly interesting, and it was only really neat because Jocelyn was there at points. Also, maybe I was missing it, but Wanda's mental breakdown thing feels like it really isn't focused on much. In fact, when they talk about Wanda's weaknesses, they bring up that her body is physically weak, only to then immediately backpedal, and then she could be blitzed, only to backpedal on me that immediately too. In fact, while her mental stability is technically mentioned, it feels less like a consistent weakness of hers that can come up in a fight, but more like something that just happened in that story. It goes into how she lost her mind as a result of Mephisto taking a perfect life, and then her own family undoing the life she forced them into. In my mind, if I didn't know Wanda was such a mentally broken character, I wouldn't have assumed this was just a persistent weakness of hers. They do say, that threat is always there, but not only does that feel more like it's talking about the power of a chaos magic, as that's what they were focusing on moments before, and less like it's talking about her ability to snap mentally, but Boomstick then goes on to sort of backpedal on the idea of that being a weakness too by talking about how it's an advantage for her. It might not seem like it's that big a deal, but this is a pretty big detail they focus on in the conclusion. Wanda's old mental state and shit. Honestly, if I didn't know that Wanda had the mental stability of an elephant on a pogo stick beforehand, I probably wouldn't have picked up on this being a big weakness, as Boomstick both speaks of it in a way that it comes across as worse a neutral factor and at best an actual advantage, but it also feels like a mental breakdown is a completely normal reaction to having your ideal life stripped away from you twice in a row. The fact that she took out the Omniverse is more of a byproduct of a normal reaction. It'd be like saying Superman has anger problems because maybe one time he got really pissed off and punched a guy hard enough to wipe out a country after that guy killed his pet Rottweiler or something. It really feels like it should have been a bigger focus, especially when it was so important to the episode's internal logic. Zatanna's a little less boring, which makes sense. Zatanna is a more interesting character in literally every way, and then they brought up things that I didn't even know about her that made her even cooler to me. Her speaking in Paladrones at one time, which due to her not actually needing to speak backwards to cast her spells, comes off as a really unnecessary flex she did for fun. That's really charming shit. I also wasn't fully aware of her story with her dad, and that was really nice to hear about. It actually felt like a, a proper concluded storyline in, in a DC comic, save for all the times he came back and died again. I actually learned new things about Zatanna that made me like her more, and that's awesome. Also, no cutaway gags, holy shit. Just cutaways to them talking with no stupid slapstick? I'll take that. Then there's the fight, and I have so many mixed feelings on this in a lot of ways, so let's start with what I liked. For the most part, Zatanna is a blast in this animation. She's always got a big smile, a lot of positive vibes, and is generally just having fun. It's great seeing how much life was put into this character I genuinely came to love as the waiting period went on, with the only sort of off bits to me being the beginning and the end. Now, the end is a bit hard to blame in the sense that Zatanna kind of has to kill Wanda for the way the show needs to work. I just think maybe she shouldn't have brought the corpse with her to the magic show. Maybe instead of bringing the corpse, there should be some sort of effect to her recreating the universe after it was destroyed. You know, because Wanda blew everything up, so she had to recreate it. And add something to make it seem like she just made everybody in the crowd believe that they imagined what happened, instead of actually that did happen. The start is just weird in general. Wanda shows up out of nowhere and immediately insults Zatanna, who immediately starts a fight just because of an insult less scathing than the average YouTube comment. But aside from those moments, Zatanna's great and I loved watching her. Additionally, both the characters' magic is really accurate to the source material. On one hand, this means Scarlet Witch primarily just has really boring red particle effects with no creativity, no real style, and honestly just looking extremely dull and lame. But on the other hand, Zatanna gets to look really dynamic, with some really pretty and far more varied spells and effects, especially when she reaches out of the screen. Everyone had to know when they saw that aspect ratio that Zatanna was going to do something like that, and it looks great when she does, which fittingly is then followed by Wanda doing the same thing, but it looks way lamer and less interesting. But, Wanda did have one moment I loved, Superman punching her in the face. Genuinely, this is one of the funniest things in any modern death battle to me. Just the out of nowhere laying out of Wanda by a fist through the card is amazing and hilarious beyond bounds. Just as hilarious as Satana's goddamn Megamind reference. Is that literally a fucking DreamWorks Megamind starring Will Ferrell and Marcus Fishbacher reference? You bet Zatanna's sweet keister it is and it's amazing, as is the shit-eating grin Zatanna has on her face. Additionally, yeah, they avoided having the magicians themselves throw hands like brawlers, a good step up from Fate vs. Strange, and the ending's also really nice, with Wanda's No More Sound shout being delivered really well. In fact, Wanda's whole mental breakdown has some incredible vocal delivery from Cassandra, last name I would gush at trying to pronounce despite not even looking that hard to pronounce. Lauren Mayfield, meanwhile, I don't think did as good a job as Atana, or at least at the start when she's showing off to the crowd. She sounds less like a woman brimming with joy and glee, 
and more like a... 30-year-old single mother who lives with her three children and old father who comes home every day after working two hard jobs, trying her hardest not to complain about it so people don't worry, and putting on a strong face when really every single day eats away more and more of her soul to the point where she doesn't want her father to pass but also knows it would lift a great strain from her life and thus feeling extremely guilty about her overall feelings and internally develops a deep-seated self-loathing at the fact she would even consider such a thing. She's gotten the rest of the episode though. Love to know more witches. That was a good flip. And for the most part, those are my pluses. I think the battle is visually very striking at points, primarily when Zatanna is doing anything and has a really funny set of interactions in it. <sighs> Unfortunately, it's not all great. While I originally wanted to comment on some of the smaller things that bug me, like how flat Zatanna looks at the start with summoning rabbits, the fact that her spells were done by the actress reading the lines normally and being reversed with an effect, and while that is accurate to how some shows do it, it's not my preferred way of doing her backwards speech, as it deviates from the comics. I'd prefer the voice actress read the sentence in reverse order, then has that reversed, so all the words are in the correct order, but the words themselves are backwards. And also, Zatanna forgot both her pants and her fishnets. There are some pretty big problems, though, that hinder my enjoyment way more than those small things. For one thing, while Zatanna was a blast, Wanda really wasn't. Now, to some extent, this is accurate to her characterization. I personally find Wanda completely insufferable most of the time, but this episode went the route of barely characterizing her, which is neither better or worse, really, it's just so sort of neutral to me. What I don't like, however, is the 0-100 to 100 mental breakdown she has. Now, I understand that no matter what you're going to do, she's going to come off as a bit of a piss-pants baby goo goo gaga bitch for losing her shit in the context of a 3-4 to four minute fight, but holy fuck, is there no build-up. She starts off in a good enough mental state to crack jokes and quips. She seems generally serious without really much strain after the Avengers Justice League fight, which makes sense seeing as there was really nothing that happened to warrant Wanda losing her mind. And then after Zatanna punts a couple baseball-sized universes at her that do no damage, Wanda instantly goes house of M, wiping out tons of universes in the multiverse. Now not only is this kind of blowing up of universes apparently a really out of place thing for Wanda as she just does not do that in this particular way, but also, what the fuck? Why did you lose your shit like that? You look like you just learned Zatanna was the imposter all along in that one game of Among Us you never figured out back in late 2020. It's weird and kind of comes out of nowhere. It's one thing to have Wanda losing her shit too easily, as that's a concession I can understand, but she literally loses her shit over practically nothing. Zatanna has hit her a couple times to no effect and gone a one man to punch her in the face. That punch just led to her still being in a generally positive mood. Like, what the fuck? Did Zatanna growing so big in your face upset you that much? It's weird, it doesn't feel right, you pussy bitch. But that feels like a symptom of my biggest problem with this fight. The pacing. It feels like very little happens in this battle, and by that I mean... you got nearly a full minute dedicated to a pretty slow and out of place Superman and Wonder Woman vs Hulk and Thor fight in the middle of a battle that's only 3 minutes itself in total runtime. In terms of what Wanda and Zatanna actually do to one another prior to the death, Zatanna chains Wanda, Wanda throws her, Zatanna becomes rabbits, Wanda gets punched in the face and grows giant, Zatanna also grows giant and then throws some baseballs at her. There's really not a lot of Scarlet Witch vs Zatanna in this Scarlet Witch vs Zatanna. It feels like a massive chunk of this fight is just straight up not there, missing. This feels like an animation where I'll see the storyboards and go, oh, so that's my, that was how much was cut for time. This fight really left something to be designed. This battle escalates from a few minor spells thrown back and forth to other people fighting to suddenly now they're in the multiverse giant. And right when it seems like it's getting good, Wanda instantly loses her shit and the fight just ends. Now granted, the death is really cool, it's fun, it's creative, it plays into the show magician gimmick that Zatanna has going on, and it's not at all what I think most people expected. And I live for this hand animation of Zatanna popping back into reality, this has so much life in it. But it just seems strange that this battle is about a minute of fighting, a minute of other people fighting, 20 seconds of them leaving the universe, and then like 40 seconds of death. It's really strangely paced, and it leaves me with a feeling of... That's it? For all the shit Strange vs. Fake got from me, that does not suffer this feeling to the same extent. Even if I think one of us is a tiny, use their magic way better and way more interestingly. Hey, this episode even has a Marvel character getting punched in the mouth as the funniest part of the fight. What sort of two-bit sorceress do you think you are? <laughs> Shut up. Oh yeah, I guess I should note that the fact that Zatanna was so playful really makes her come off like she bodied Wanda. Wanda is losing her shit before Zatanna even gets serious. And the moment Zatanna does get serious in a scene that's literally just the ending to Cable vs Booster Gold with the failed attempt to talk away a shield, only to get Uno reversed and fucked up the ass in a creative way that involves encasing the loser, Zatanna basically just wins with no effort. Like, wow, Wanda got fucked hard, and I'd probably be more upset if Zatanna wasn't maybe my favourite female character across Marvel and DC at this point, and Wanda wasn't so fucking aggravating. Hell, Zatanna ones up Wanda by a pretty big margin in terms of what she actually did in the fight, too. Wanda, for the most part, sits there doing nothing. 
So Uno reverses two of Zatanna's spells, then gets outclassed in style, gets clocked with some balls, takes a massive shit in her pants, and dies after failing to hit Zatanna even once. That's why I had this moment right here. This is Wanda's one real blow on Zatanna. And for the most part, that's what a lot of the problems and benefits of this episode come from. The characters. All the best parts of this fight to me are from Zatanna, while all the worst parts to me are from Wanda. With the exception of the pacing, which genuinely is some of the worst pacing I think any death battle has had. Like, this to me would be the equivalent of if Doctor Strange vs Doctor Fate had the same start, but instead the middle was focusing on other characters in the worlds they teleport into fighting, and the end skipped immediately to Doctor Fate unleashing the infinite gender without any of the fight on the dragon's back that happens. And then the conclusion is just sort of okay. I don't know, I have little say on it, and the next time I'm excited for it because Jonathan gets to punch a child in the face. So that was Scarlet Witch vs Zatanna. Shockingly, I actually did have a lot to say about it, which I didn't really expect going in, and despite that, it feels like I haven't really talked about anything. It feels like there was nothing to talk about, which does make me sad. Overall, I'm still giving this episode a 7, hard carried by how happy I am that Satana won. Probably the biggest pop-off I've given to a character winning in a while now. Though for most of that period between this and Mario vs. Eisen, there wasn't any episodes coming out, so take that for what you will. Overall, it was a good episode. It really was. I enjoyed a decent amount of it. I just think the fact that it had to be crammed to only 3 minutes really limited it. And it's stuff like this that makes me think, maybe there is such a thing as too much animation potential now. Matchups like this with tons of animation potential I am almost starting to feel shouldn't really be death battles, as much as they should be passion projects worked on for months by indie versus shows. Smaller ones who don't have as much of a need to follow a consistent schedule, and can instead pump out episodes on a more irregular basis to maximize their quality and care. I really hate saying it, I almost feel dirty saying it, but even ignoring how many fun interactions I would have liked to see that went in there, like Wanda and Zatanna fusing into one only to match each other equally within and unsplit, Zatanna having to go into Wanda's Eldritch Orchid afterlife and birth an entire cosmos within to destabilize it so Wanda can actually stay dead, Wanda and Zatanna both stopping time repeatedly against one another, adding layers and layers of time stop until time itself breaks, and the rest of the fight in this section takes place where time doesn't flow, so everything that isn't themselves and their magic is locked in place until they bring time back. Maybe has Zatanna tear up panels in the animation and like stop the animation from reaching the point she dies and then Wanda shows up there too, and they have a fight until they collide into the final frame not knowing who's really gonna die. These are things that I didn't expect, and don't hold it against Death Battle to not include. Even though I'm sure some daft cunt is going to say my entire review is invalidated because Death Battle don't have the time to add in my ideas, which like, yeah, thanks dickhead. I know why the episode is the way it is, but even knowing those limitations, I don't think we needed a third of it to have no relation to the characters. An animation can be really short, but feel like it includes a lot. Reva Strider is a great example of that. And this feels like a really short animation that didn't include a lot. Once again, it feels really dirty to say, but I'm really feeling like sometimes these matchups with enough animation potential to fill pages of pages of pages really need those long animations not and feel like they're just underwhelmingly short. Really, I feel they should be given to indie versus shows where the creators have a shitload of passion, or to season finales, which this matchup could have been, but also I don't think I could handle a finale being a matchup I find this uninteresting. Regardless, yes, the episode is good, and I don't want anyone to think otherwise. Just because I had a lot of criticisms to levy at the fight, Thing is, criticism just frankly takes more time to express because you have to explain it more deeply, while praise for something that doesn't really have any deeper meaning or symbolism, like a 3 minute death battle animation, is often as simple as pointing at something and saying, hey, that's an example of what something good looks like. It's a good episode, just one that left me simultaneously pleasantly surprised and also woefully disappointed. Once again, you guys can check out Biff Weed's review, that'll be linked, and have a good one. I'm still stoked about the Satana dub, though, not gonna lie.